to take it back to rates, right? Because people feel that with the rates going up, that means the sky is falling. And I want to kind of take a minute to explain why, even though the rates have went up a half since the first of the year, right, it's still a good time to buy. Because you're talking about, we are predicting housing market, the home prices are going to increase appreciation around 15%. And that's just in the first quarter of 2022, right? So what does that mean? So even if you, with the rates increasing, it still makes sense to purchase these homes, buyers, and, and even if you have an existing home on refinancing, you should not be discouraged to still kind of try and achieve your goals. Right. I mean, I, in my opinion, I say this all the time, if, you, if you're going to pitch a bitch about a rate between 3% and 4%, you might not want to buy that home. You might not be able to afford it because there's so much more that goes into a home that 1% in a rate shouldn't make your do or do not, you know? So you never know what's going to pop up. You have to be prepared. You have to be prepared for the over, uh, the over uh, expense on each and every home and just get with your team. Like, like Renee was saying, Becky was saying, get with your team, a lot of communication, making sure you're talking about what the positives and negatives are you know, before the break, Renee was talking about offers being accepted versus not being accepted. And I'd love to hear some more about what her mentality on uh, as a listing agent on what should be accepted, what shouldn't, so that our listeners can be savvy enough to move forward in their next uh, opportunity. But talking to your team about, hey, okay, I'm going to put this appraisal waiver or this escalation clause into place. What could this possibly do to my numbers? And that's something I would love to go over with each and every client so that they know what they're getting themselves into. Too many times I get a call and I've, I gave an appraisal waiver. You're putting five percent down. How are you going? How are you going to do an appraisal waiver? What happens if this thing comes, you know, forty thousand dollars under under uh, purchase price? You just you, where's it going to come from? Right. Well, I, what what does that mean? What do you mean? What does that mean? There should be just like creative strategies in making an offer. There's also if you really are that rate conscious, if you really are freaking out about three and a half percent or three point. I hate to say it, but you don't can buy the house. Either don't buy the house, or then do something different than do a five percent, do a, or do a um, you know a seven year arm, do a ten year arm. Sometimes you can get a little bit of a better rate with that. I wouldn't suggest it. I think at these historical it, yeah, lows, it's, it's still crazy. a fixed rate market. Mm -hmm. It's still a fixed rate market, but we do have clients that somehow can't wrap their head around. Well, you know, I had three point two percent on the other house, and I want this. Okay, well, if it really is, there are strategies around that. But what there are not strategies around are capitalizing and getting that house. So if you, they should be looking also at their down payment because with the, el the escalation of these prices at 15%, that's something to consider too. And at 4%, you're still, it's insane. So it's, it, you need to be able to put the money down, especially with the escalation clauses, especially with the appraisal waivers. And what I was saying before the break is you have to have you know, people like this, these are your mortgage strategists that when I get an offer and I'm working with a client and a buyer brings an offer from someone I've never heard of or a company that, you know, really doesn't have a good relationship with that client, I don't care if they're $20,000 ahead of the other person. Sometimes that offer is not, they're buying the time. So you've got to be careful. We have buyers out there or agents that will put an offer down that these people are just trying to lock it up and they may not qualify or they might not be the best buyer for that particular property. And that's the consulting that you need to do with your sellers and sellers be aware. Not all mortgage companies are created equal and not all offers are going to go across the finish line. You have to know that that is crucial to accepting an offer. Yeah, so people have to understand that houses are going or at list or over list, okay? And if they're going for over listing price and you're putting a minimal amount down, like Renee said, you know the appraisal is not going to come in. Plan on it not coming in. So then the down payment becomes the issue. If you want to put less down, chances are Renee, if she's got five offers in front of her, she's going to go with probably the highest price and the most amount down. All right, or else it's going to blow up. If she's, if there's something fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars over, but you're only putting five to ten percent down, and Renee knows the house, and everybody knows it's all just goes up front. This house is not going to appraise for X. You're buying it in the hot market. That's what you're doing. It's supply and demand. You know it. We know it. But you're not going to get the appraisal in on it. Right, yeah. John? Right. So here's I've got a question for Renee then. So someone puts an offer in at twenty percent down. You accept their offer. The appraisal doesn't come in. They have to switch their financing to 10% down to cover the appraisal guarantee. Are you cool with that as a listing agent? 
as long as I, yes, I would be okay with that. I don't care as long as I know that they have the funds. So before I accept that offer, the conversation happens between me and you, John. Yep. This is where a listing agent that knows the business and knows what they're doing and has had a history of watching things you know, that don't always work out, we do not accept an offer, whether it's multiple offers or not. Historically, I haven't. Until I speak directly with the lender, I want to know how deeply they've gone down the road with that client. Do they have liquid funds to, to be able to adjust if this appraisal doesn't come in or otherwise? What can they tell me? Now, they can't always disclose everything. We have risk of violation issues, which I'm very, very aware of. But they can at least get us comfortable. And if I have a, a company you know, like Capital who is established, who we know is going to give us clientele and make a pre-approval for someone who legitimately can do this, we know that together your team will navigate it. If I don't have someone with that, that I have that level of confidence with, I may not be willing to adjust it. It is as important. It's probably one of the most important things when you're getting an offer to know and have had that conversation with the lender to make sure that as this maybe moves around, they can move with, the buyer can move with it and that, they, that the company knows how to do that. I actually had a conversation with some real estate agents yesterday, and they were talking about just this, right? The conversation, you see an offer, they'll call, but they'll purposely call lenders 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock at night, just to see if they're going to answer, because that is a tell sign of who you're dealing with. And I know I'm tethered to my phone. We all are, right? Because this is our business, but your every pre-approval is not equal to the same, just like every person you're that's on the other side of that they're not, I'm done at five. I don't even know what that means, right? So, you yeah. know, are you purposely calling people at eight o'clock just to see if someone's going to answer? Sometimes people do, sometimes they don't. But the reality is, is that you have to be available when you are in this competitive market because maybe that's when the time that the sellers have time for themselves to look at these offers. And if I make those calls and get 1-800-CALL-ME, you know, from some <laughs> lenders, that offer is getting pushed aside because I'm going through three or four of these to see which one really is in the best interest with my client. And I need to know I've got a cell phone, I can text somebody, and they're going to respond and that they know this industry the way they need to. What I like the most about what you said too, though, is sometimes it's not always the top dollar, right? Because if someone's offering you 75000 over asking, who cares if the loan doesn't close? Right. Right? right. Who cares? That's cool. I'll take the next elevator, right? Because I know this loan's going to close and my clients are still going to get a realistic top dollar for this market because all these are just record setting years after year after year. Right. And I really like when, when buyer's agents give me, Becky, Harry, the heads up that, hey, I'm giving your name, I'm giving your number, they're going to be giving you a call so that we can be aware and ready to talk about the the positives of the client that in the offer that they've accepted, you know, and nine times out of 10, you know, sometimes you're putting a little bit less down, 10% down, 15% down, so that you can cover that appraisal guarantee or like we were talking about, to make sure that they have enough money. So it's it's all about making sure the communication stays there, that you have that conversation with the buyer's agent and the listing agent so that they're aware that this client is able to put 20% down. But if the appraisal comes in, it's going to be more like a 10% down because I don't like surprises. I don't want to get to two weeks into the uh, into the loan and everyone blows up because nobody knew what was going on. Like to, to I'm, I'm point, very upfront. Yeah, you know, to the point. Like John, you are fantastic about stuff like that, and I know you're like like me a lot. Where I will tell like my agents that I work with on a regular basis, they copy me on these offers, and so when they are submitting these offers, I'm immediately chiming in, so that way everyone knows I'm engaged, I'm locked in, and I know you do the same because there's not very many people that can take information and immediately adjust because unfortunately buyer sabotage is also a real thing. They don't mean to do it. People are out there buying things they don't need to buy. And it takes a very special person to be able to take something that could potentially blow something up and just pivot and make it happen. And you're someone that's really good at doing that. Harry knows how to do it. I mean, but not very many people can do that. Right. Well, you know, it's 25 years, and all this gray hair. So that's, <laughs> uh, that'll oh do it for you. But it goes back to what we were saying. This is not a market. For newbies. Nope. You know, this is not something you don't want to have anybody representing you on the lender side, on the mortgage side, on the inspection side that has not experienced it, doesn't understand what they are getting into because it's, you know, it's a battle out there and you got to be, you have to have the tools and the, and, and the skill set to understand how you can help your client. And it, it is absolutely, it, it's not something for people who haven't. Some no, and it's a, and it's really key. I mean, I have empathy for buyers right now. I mean, you're talking that it's a, another second year, extremely competitive. 
Now there's like the rate hikes. People are freaking out when they probably don't need to as much. It's just having those conversations. Your payment's adjusting by $30. But we've seen a shift though, right? We've seen a shift in expectations before two years ago, you know, everybody wanted the sun to move in the stars, right? Now buyers are shifting their expectations, right? They're they're adjusting a little bit downward what they thought. Instead of checking nine out of 10 boxes, maybe they're checking six out of 10, seven out of 10 boxes. So Renee, you're seeing all of a sudden a change in attitude, right? Buyer fatigue is real. It is yes. real, and we're up against another break. When we Lender come back, fatigue is real. <laughs> too. Real when we come back, real. I want to hear uh, Renee's market trends. What's going on? What's cool in the houses? And what can a buyer sellers do right now to prepare for the spring market coming up? We are joined by the one, the only Renee Lacia Acho, leader of her LA, um, our LA group, right um, out of Keller Williams Domain class act listen if you have an opportunity to you know reach out to her her staff her team you are talking to a of the highest caliber of agents that you're going to deal with i mean literally i her energy if you guys could be in the room a great aura good person she knows what's going on and i feel blessed to be here today with her um we're going to pick her brain on some things that sellers can do to prepare for the spring market but before we get into that we have a call um, Kevin, how are you? Where are you from? And what is your question? We got Kevin? Hello. Hello, Kevin. Bueller. Kevin's not here. All right. <laughs> Kevin's not here. We're going to go back to Kevin as soon as we can get him back up on the line. So in the meantime, what are things? So like you got housing trends, new construction, right? What are things that are timeless? And is it, you know, I'm kind of like hitting you with all of them at once actually. So I'll probably back up. But like. You know, sellers putting their house on the market, do you tell them to fix it? Do you tell them oh, to leave it? Oh, whoa, whoa. There, there is a method to the madness. Okay. Yes, we have an inventory issue. Yes, your house is going to sell most likely if you are priced right. Do not mistake that pricing is still the driving force behind offers. People think, you know, I can price it. No, you have to have some level of comps. But you should always start with staging. And we do this on every one of our houses. I don't care whose house it is. I don't care if it's new construction. I I do it on my own house when I sell it. Staging is where it should all start. And there's reasons for it. So staging doesn't just mean bringing in furniture. It means going in and sort of cleaning up the areas. It's organizing closets. It's moving furniture, your existing furniture around. It's paring down some of your accessories. It's opening up your countertops. It's getting your windows clean, getting your carpets cleaned. Um, why is this important? And paint is my favorite, favorite cost, most yeah, cost hear about the paint. favorite way to start anything. It makes everything feel fresh. You should neutralize your rooms. You don't want to make it so vanilla that it's unexciting, but you clean it up. And a lot of times, just a quick, fresh coat of paint that's usually very cost effective is going to bring you back a considerable amount of money because it feels better. It looks cleaner in the photos. It feels fresher when people go into the homes. So, Renee, I'm a hoarder. Right? Oh, I'm a hoarder. So, <laughs> oh, so he like, is. I mean, my, He's like uh, Ariel I, I and keep, Little you Mermaid. You should see my, my office is crazy. But anyway, <laughs> so my wife, I hope, please don't listen. Honey, don't listen to this show. Um, what do you do with, when you have somebody like me that likes to keep everything? Well, you can't. Move, so, move you out? Yeah, so, uh, well, yeah, yeah. It is an option. But I do this. So on my team, we pay for the staging. I go into every house and I tell them, listen, you want my listing? I have a, a level of expectation that I set for my team and I'm doing this for you. I'm not here to be your best friend or your decorator. But what I'm going to do is be your consultant. And I will advise you that doing these things, when you go through a closet, people sometimes think, oh, I'm going to make the closet all organized because it makes me look like I'm, you know, I have my life together. Exactly. (laughs) Well, that's one reason. But the real reason is that when buyers go in and they open up that door, you don't want things to look like they're stuffed because that then sets the the tone that there's not enough room in the house. There's not enough place to store. There's not enough, you know, there's where, why are your shoes all by the front door? There must not be a mudroom. So those are things that are not just strategies for making the house look more up to date, but also cleans those spaces so people don't psychologically think there's not room for them. So we do that. A good agent will start with staging if you don't have anybody there are a lot of companies out there um, we have our own and there are several companies that will come in and for a very reasonable amount of money that investment alone is going to bring you back a lot in your photos that's where it all starts so starting with the staging doing some things like paint getting things cleaned getting your windows cleaned, doing your front pots those are basic things beyond that 
If you have, um, I tell my clients, do a pre-inspection if you can. And it doesn't have to be a full-blown inspection, but who crawls into their attic? Who goes right. and looks right. into the back corner of their, you know, you're going to pay for it. Well, you don't want to be surprised. You don't want to yeah. be surprised on the real inspection. No, so you can do a few things. Do a sewer scope if you need to. Do some things that will at least prevent it, be, you know, preventative medicine, if you will. Do a little health checkup. And then present that to your seller, as a seller, to your um, you know, potential buyers and say, look, we did this. This was all done. It tells the, the, the consumer that's coming into the house, these people are very on top of it. This is a house that's been nicely maintained. Um, and, you know, if you're thinking about selling the house in the fall, get your gutters cleaned then so that if you're doing this in the winter, you don't have clogged gutters that look, you know, potentially for ice damming. So there's a lot of things, changing your air filters, changing your furnace filters, things that are general maintenance that you should be doing year round. But if you're not, you're thinking about selling your house, definitely do them now. Look, so, okay, so this list, right, these are things that you're in a seller's market and the fact that you're still out here promoting you know, what you're promoting as far as for your sellers to get in position, do their own private inspections on their homes because you are prepared. I mean, that is the level of professionalism that you're getting with Renee and her team. They're not resting on their laurels of this is a seller's market. We're going to get the top dollar. We don't have to do anything because they're always putting their best foot forward. And that is just a testament of the caliber that you guys are working with. Right. right. She, yeah. She's not out there just throwing houses against the wall to see what sticks. Right. It's her she's, name. The, she's there to make sure that she's getting you the best dollar. That she's getting you, making her team do the least amount of work so that they prep on the front end, kind of like we all do, right? With, you know, running numbers left and right. See, you we know? take that for granted, though. Everyone doesn't right? do that. No, no, not every, you're, you're 100% right. And and it's it's that type of uh, relationship that you want to build with somebody like Renee or somebody like Becky, Harry, myself, so that we can al- always be there giving you advice. Renee wants everybody walking through that house to see the potential of the home, not what the home has been through, not, the, not the hell through. Yeah, so. positive eye spasm. I love that. Right. So <laughs> no, you do. You want people think they're going to get that price automatically. On these situations, you might get caught up in getting that list price and getting you know a, a certain offer, but it can catch up to you on an inspection if your house hasn't been maintained. And it's just good habits. And yes, I as an agent want my inventory and my clients to, to show up in their best you know, their, their best foot forward. Well, your name's on it. And my it's name's your on brand it. name. It is. Yeah. It's your brand name. You've built a brand. You know what you expect out of it. And when you walk into somebody's house, you're going to say, hey, Harry, get those boxes out of your closet, buddy. Yeah. Get rid of all this stuff, right? And it transacts to more dollars in your in, in your bank. It really does. People don't realize it. But I can show you situations where that has happened and it hasn't. And at the end of the day, you will get more money for investing that time and energy into pre-listing your house the right way. And when you pull those boxes out of Harry's... <laughs> House, you know where they go, right? You know, if you went they, to they, John's closet, he still has a Plexico Burris MSU jersey that he wore when he was walking around on campus. Well, that's right, not John? true, but that's okay. I don't, I mean, I, I I don't wear another some... man's name on the my, on my back. <laughs> okay, hey. unlike okay, so, you, I'm unlike ju- you, I'm unlike you, judging. Stafford. I'm not. I love Matt Stafford. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, mean, I am. Listen, yeah, go my Matt guy. Stafford for sure next week. We're pumped about All that. The haters, come out, hate yeah. me, please. <laughs> okay, so I want to hear about paint colors, right? So trends. We're the white and grays. All the things, right? Is it? Still white and grays. Are we leaning towards pops of color again? Mm. What's happening out there? So neutrals are everything. Okay. Neutral, neutral, neutral. It, and it's, it's, you can add your elements, but you want to start with a neutral palette. It was the real dark floors for a while. You know, we were doing those ebony color and coffee color espresso floors. It's moving toward, if you're doing anything new or you're renovating, and I'm, if you go on to my uh, Instagram, you'll see all my tips that I put out there. Wider plank floors. Wax finishes, not as shiny, shiny yeah, finish. Matte. matte and wax and, you know, not as you don't want to have the, the nail polish coat at top of, on top of your floor. Um, wider plank and light colors. So we're streamlining. Blacks are a new neutral. Whites. Um, we know golds, but a certain kind of gold. It's the metals, a lot of metals, whether it's silver metal or gold metal or black metal. All the matte metal finishes um, are very, very in. And neutrals, the grays are grays, whites. You know, light, light um, color palettes are always going to be timeless. The elements are a little bit leaning toward the contemporary, so more of a flat panel kitchen cabinet, um, a little more streamlined, less moldings, less trim, much more clean line uh, looks. And then you can mix whatever you want with that. But that is certainly the trend is moving from we were traditional for a while in the early 2000s, and it went transitional where it basically had an identity crisis it was <laughs> right, traditional yeah. or contemporary yeah. and now it's moving it's leaning from transitional it leans toward contemporary so real streamlined 
um, and clean looks with a clean palette, gray, white, real light off whites, light neutral color floors, very um, you know grays, blacks, whites in terms of countertops and so forth, with with an edge of contemporary. Mm, Love that, it. Was, that was the part of the show where I had no idea what she was talking. About. <laughs> I, I saw Harry not off. Uh, thank he's, you, Renee, for that. I appreciate we, uh, it. He's, he's back to life, but I, I'm here for it. I'm like, yes, yeah, yeah I, let's talk about it. Harry doesn't like that kind of stuff. He doesn't. He doesn't pay for grass. He doesn't uh, pay for dirt. You know. Uh, it, but those it, things matter. So if I'm walking into a house, right, because. I, you know, so I like, you know, like if you're, I'm a buyer, I'm coming in, you got a red wall, you got this going on. I'm like, oh, I don't know about this house. Right. But if you same exact house, you change that color just a little bit, you make these little adjustments and all of a sudden your mind just goes on fire with all the possibilities because you have to paint the picture. You're helping them. And it's very hard. A lot of people, we realize this, have a very limited vision. It's tough. So here's a little trick that I use that for those of you who don't maybe want to spend the money or time painting that room from red to white mm -hmm. um you can do something called virtual staging so we do this a lot in our uh, in our new construction properties where people can't visualize how something might look with furniture in it we have people that do virtual staging and they can change the wall color or make it with furniture and half the time you don't even realize it's computer generated but it looks fantastic and then we'll put up big poster boards in the room on an easel so that when you're going in oh okay this is what it would look like if it was white instead of red or with furniture or whatever so here's all the work i have to do yeah yes, <laughs> right you don't always have to spend the money you just have to get creative with how it's presented but right. it's like all of the things right so if you're not following renee and her team on social media you need to you need to hit them up on instagram you need to hit them up on facebook what's your um instagram handle do you know off hand off hand rla realtors everything is rla just find those initials and you'll usually find us love it so because i checked out her instagram Great information, and if you've been listening and if you've been fortunate enough to listening, you need to actually get in contact with Renee if you're looking to buy, if you're looking to sell, whatever it is that you're looking to do in this market because you are going to get top-notch service, and we're not just saying that because the details, like, I mean, there's very few agents right now in the seller's market that are going to still... Um, encourage their sellers to get this private home inspection or do their own sewer scope and to present it to the buyers. But again, it just shows that you are now you know, projecting that onto your, your clients to make sure that they're shining in the best light. You're making them level up, right? So being in the room with you alone, we're all leveling up here and I'm loving it. It's awesome. I think you got to spend money to make money, right? Renee and her team, yeah. they spend the money, they do their homework and they're going to pr present her brand for you. So you get top dollar. And I think it's important. I think you know, whenever you're sitting across from a professional, Renee, thanks for coming in here today, you get the great vibe, mm -hmm. right? You get the great vibe, you get the experience, you get the knowledge level and everything that comes along with it. You can tell. Listen, players know players, right? Mm -hmm. You can't fake it. Right. Players know players. You players, can't fake it till you make it right now, that's, that's right. for sure. Pla <laughs> players on. know who should play, right? So that's where we're at. All right, so someone's reaching out to you right now. Okay. They're thinking about buying. What's your advice to them? First and foremost, you always start with a pre-approval. Yep. I have not taken anybody anywhere without having the experience of talking to one of you guys and having that ready. You need it to put on an offer. You need it to know where you're at, where you stand, what you can afford, and be educated about your own situation before you go out there and make a mistake one way or another. All right, you heard it here right now. Pre-approvals are where you got to go. Not all pre-approvals equal the same, but it matters. From the best of the best, Renee Lasiacho, RLA Real Estate Group out of Keller Williams Domain. Get your pre-approval. If you're looking to buy a home, it matters. And who you work with matters. For myself, Becky Alley, Mr. Harry Glanz, John Kolb, uh, Renee, I can't say enough great things about you. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week and on the Hardcore Mortgage Podcast on Wednesday, 1130. See you then.